Good day, and welcome to another edition of Cooking with Shoe Boy. Today, we are going to learn how to make mac and cheese. And I don't mean craft mac and cheese. It doesn't really count, okay? It comes in a blue box, and you dump it in, it's orange. This is the mac and cheese recipe that used to be on the Cream Max box. This piece of cardboard is probably about, I would guess, 50 years old. But this is the official recipe the kind of mom used to make when you were a kid, if you remember. And it's awesome when it's cold. So, you can see that. That's the recipe of the stuff. The stuff you're going to need. Two cups of the elbow macaronis. A half a cup of butter. Now, a half a cup of butter is one stick of butter. Two tablespoons of flour. You can be a little bit more generous with the flour. One and a half cups of milk. One teaspoon of salt. I usually only use, only use a half a teaspoon of salt, not one teaspoon of salt. Quarter cup, or a quarter, I'm sorry, a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Again, I use an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. And one cup of grated cheese. No. Try maybe like two cups of grated cheese. And we only use like the sharp cheese. We prefer the uh, New York extra cheddar, extra cheddar sharp. You should try saying that when you're drunk. New York extra cheddar sharp is what we prefer. Recipe calls for a half a cup of butter. A half a cup of butter is one stick of butter. We put the butter in the pan, in the pot here. But again, a two quart pot. Um, we turn the flame on. We don't want to turn the flame too high. We want it. We want it low. Over here is the water for the um, elbow macaroni. Two cups. That's got to be on high. We want that to boil. We got that on high. One thing I like to do so that macaroni doesn't stick together. Add a little oil to the water. Just a little bit of uh, canola oil, vegetable oil. Doesn't have to be uh, anything other than that. Only, I don't recommend using olive oil. Olive oil is more expensive. And it's also harder to say than canola oil. While that's cooking, you can see we got all our supplies, everything we need, all of our dry ingredients, the flour, the, sh the salt, and the pepper are here. These are our uh, two cups of elbow macaronis that we we'll need. Here's our, some sharp cheese and a cheese grater. We, we have more cheese, so we're good. Our one and a half cups of milk. Uh, we'll pour that, we're supposed to pour that into the pot after we mix in the dry ingredients and the, and the melted butter. We're gonna put it in the microwave. Just a trick. It helps it, uh, I find, uh, if you take, take the milk, put it in the microwave, heat it for like a minute and a half, two minutes, just until you see it's like starting to boil in the in the hand, in the um, measuring cup, then you pour it in. So it doesn't take forever to heat the mixture up so it gets thick. As you can see, the butter's starting to melt. And we're right here, so we can maybe turn it up a little bit, get it going. Get it to melt a little bit more. So as your butter is melting, here's a good good thing to do. Get some Crisco, dab it on some wax paper, and rub it all over the bottom and the sides of your pan. You don't want the uh, pack of cheese sticking to the bottom of your, or the sides of your pan. This pan may look a little big. That's because today I'm making a triple batch of mac and cheese. You would need a pan of a third of the size it is. But because we're making a triple batch today, you're only watching me make one batch. But when I combine it all in, I've already made three batches. So that's pretty good. We're well coated there. And again, if you're making a single batch, you want a smaller dish. Something like this. Something like this size square. See our butter started to melt, right? It's getting a little, little hot there. We'll turn the flame down a little bit, pretty low. And we'll start mixing in our dry ingredients. You can just dump them right in all together. Just kind of mix it up. It'll get kind of pasty or whatever. 
and that's fine. As you're doing this, up to the microwave, we're gonna start cooking our milk here, heating it up a minute, 30 seconds. And then just try to get this all flour and salt, and pepper and butter mixture all together so it gets to be a little pasty. So there's no like lumps anywhere. You'll think it's gonna be lumpy, but it's not. It soaks the butter soaks it, the flour and everything right up so it dissolves pretty quick. Timing is everything when you're making mac and cheese. So your water's boiling, your concoction here of flour and butter and everything is starting to thicken a little bit. And you're like, you know what, I'm going to have to add that milk soon to this. As you can see, it's going to start to bubble. But that's all right, because we already started our milk heating up, so we'll be good. It's starting to bubble up. We're ready for our milk, and our milk's done. That's heated up a little bit. That's good. It won't take us forever to, for this to heat up and thicken. So you stir the milk in slowly. When you, you don't want to stir the milk in fast. Mix it around. As you're stirring. And you'll see right now, it's not that thick. It's pretty watery, right? That's okay. It's going to thicken. It's got flour in it. The thing I like to do. I'll turn the heat up a little more. Not much. Pretty low flame on the heat still. One thing I like to do, just to get it cheesy. I know they call for two cups, I'm sorry, one cup of grated cheese. This is our New York sharp cheddar. I just grate it right in. A little bit. I guess a little bit's all relative. But it does two things. It helps make the flour and stuff that we're cooking on the stove a little thicker and it also makes that macaroni taste cheesy throughout not just on top and you can see already this is starting to thicken it's almost like you want it to look like uh, soup uh, maybe like cream of mushroom soup uh, you don't have to like cream of mushroom soup I'm not a real fan of it but that's almost the consistency of the thickness that the mixture starts to take on. That's exactly what you want. So you can see this is thickened pretty good. We're going to turn that heat down on this pretty low. Then we're going to let our elbows cook. Water boil. Gotta grab a spoon. Start it. Macaronis as they're boiling. And we start the timer, we set the timer for whatever it calls on the package. It's usually like seven or eight minutes. One thing I find with macaroni when it's boiling is you gotta stir it early as it's boiling. Within that first minute, otherwise it'll stick all on the bottom, no matter how much oil you put in the water. So just get it kicking around in there. So our macaroni we just put in is boiling. You can see our concoction here. Pretty thick, pretty soupy. Okay, we can turn the flame off on this. We don't need this to get any any warmer or any thicker. It's good. So we'll turn it off, and we're gonna wait until our macaroni noodles have boiled. Yeah. So our mac and cheese is done. It's boiled. The timer's just gone off. We're gonna drain it in our colander now. The macaroni Make sure it's pretty well drained. Yeah, you want to get as much water off of there as you can. See it's still coming out the bottom. Once it's drained. Pretty good. We're going to take it back to the pot with our concoction and put it in. 
I like this colander because it bends. I can make sure I get every last drop of mac and macaroni in there. Now we mix. We want the, all these macaronis coated with our great sauce that we made here. There you can see. That's pretty good. Pretty good consistency. We're going to dish it out into the pan. I want to get a scoop here so I can make sure I can get every last drop. Remember, this is an oversized pan because we're going to make two more batches. as we can. Here we go. Alright, old plastic spoon here seems to get more, so. Now, what I would do, we're to level this off, so I'm going to kind of shake it up back and forth, side to side. Get it all six down there. What I would do now if I was done, I would take the cheese grater and the sharp cheese, and I would grate over top all the way back and forth until it's evenly covered. A nice good helping of cheese. And then what I would do to make sure it was evenly covered still, I'd do the same thing this way, long way. I'd grade and grade and grade and grade and grade. Would have a nice, a nice hefty, not not too hefty, but a nice covering of sharp cheese on top. And then you can whatever you want. Some people prefer paprika. You just sprinkle the paprika on top of the cheese. Some people prefer bacon. You can take crushed bacon and just sprinkle that on top. Of the cheese, of the macaroni and cheese when you're done. That would be your final step in preparation. Then it would go in the oven 350 degrees for 30 minutes. You only need it to melt. Doesn't really need to cook that much because everything's basically cooked now. But it'll heat up and it'll be fantastic when it comes out of the oven. 